Hello and welcome. This is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and we're going to talk about my shoes. Odd topic to start a video with, but I promise we're getting to what's behind me. But I'm wearing a set of trail shoes. Most people don't wear trail shoes 24-7. They wear something like a tennis shoe instead for walking around day to day. And a tennis shoe provides plenty of grip, plenty of capability for all of your around town sort of walking. But if you want to go somewhere a little bit further off the beaten path, you need something like a trail shoe that's got these extra little nubs on the bottom, give you a little bit more grip. We're going to talk about the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness, which is kind of the trail shoe of the crossover world. Subaru has noticed for years now that a small portion of their customers have been taking their Outbacks and Foresters and Crosstreks, lifting them, putting them on some more off-road capable tires, doing different suspension things, and they have been going and hitting some mild trails for the sake of light off-roading, for the sake of biking, fishing, camping, you name it, they're trying to do it. And Subaru said, hey, why don't we just do this and offer it from the factory? That means we can integrate everything with our EyeSight driver assistance system, and we can offer a warranty on all these extra beefed up items. So that's what they did. This is the first of their Wilderness series. This is the 2022 Outback Wilderness, and it's basically an Outback Onyx XT trim level that they added all this off-road stuff to. So let's talk about what this Outback Wilderness is versus a regular Outback, and then we're actually gonna take it on a trail where I took a couple of Subarus several years ago that were nowhere near as off-road prepped as this one and see how it does. All right, so before we get into the trail, let's talk about what this Outback Wilderness is. Like I said, this is an Outback Onyx XT that has been wildernessified, which is to say you've got the XT motor. So this is a turbocharged 2.4 liter Boxer 4. It makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. That all gets shoved to the ground to all four wheels with Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system that's standard on pretty much every Subaru at this point. And of course, it's going to go through a CVT, a continuously variable transmission. A lot of people don't love CVTs. Subaru has tried to iterate on them year after year. It's still up to you if you love it or not, but they did change the final drive ratios of this CVT for the wilderness. So it's got a 4.44 to one ratio instead of a 4.11 on the regular Outback XT. Looking further down here, this actually has as much ground clearance as a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. I'll say that again, it has nine and a half inches of ground clearance, which is the same as a brand new G-Wagon. So Subaru did beef it up. The standard Outback has 8.7 inches. This has a little bit more. You've also got these 17 inch unique wheels with a nice big tire. It's got a nice big sidewall, no skinny sidewalls here, and it is a Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tire. And the nice thing about this is that Subaru has included another one of these with the same tire, you've got the same wheel and tire, as your spare in the back of the Outback Wilderness. Beyond that, if you move kind of around the whole vehicle, you've got an extra skid plate up front. They also offer some more skid plates for the engine, transmission, fuel tank on their Subaru Accessories website. Looking up top here, you've got the roof rack, which they have added static load capacity to, so it can carry a little bit more weight uh, both on the move and then especially when you're parked if you're looking to put a rooftop tent on this vehicle. And then finally, software-wise, every Outback comes with what they call X-Mode, which is basically the all-wheel drive software. Subaru has tweaked the X-Mode for the Outback Wilderness to give you some better settings, some better fine-tuning for the sake of off-roading, and it will allow the X-Mode to run above 25 miles an hour, which is not the case all of the time. Now this does add a little bit of money to your Outback pricing. Like I said, this is built off the Onyx XT model, so it's not built off the top trim, but it is pretty well equipped. With the Wilderness package on it, this Outback Wilderness comes in right around $39,000. So with all that, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's hit the trail and see how this thing does. Figure it out. Wow. Yeah, like I would probably go to the party if you had a bunker. That's probably the best. Like, you know, like this big one here. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, we're on the trail. So first of all, Tyler's here. He came down from New Jersey to, uh, to do this with me, among other things. So this trail, like I said, we did a couple years ago with uh, some very awful cars that were <laughs> far less prepped than this. Um, the worst one we had was by far a 94 Subaru Legacy, which was bad because it was low. That was when those were, you know, a, a low riding station wagon and it was on newer STI wheels. They promptly got a flat and finished the whole trail on three of those wheels and one very original yes. donut spare tire. So uh, it's really nice to be running this in something that is uh, meant to be more off the beaten path than that legacy was. Uh, and we're actually following a Wrangler that has kind of adopted us as their little buddy for the day. They're kind of, I think they're morbidly curious to see if we're gonna make it out of here, but uh, regardless, it's nice to have another set of eyes out here so we're not wheeling entirely alone. So far, I don't know, you can, you can speak to your own impressions, but this has been really impressive. Um, I have to keep reminding myself that the ground clearance is like a lot. And yes. you know, the, the X mode all wheel drive software has been really impressive. So Tyler's been out of the car. You can tell everyone what it's been like to watch. Yeah. I mean, we were just talking before the cameras went on about how this is only an inch and a half less ground clearance than a Jeep Rubicon. So having been out of the car and having been spotting the car stuff that looks like it's a big deal from the inside, there's really still plenty of room to go over it with as far as ground clearance is concerned. As far as tires and grip are concerned, you can you can ride this thing up a decent sized boulder without getting hardly any momentum and it will work itself out and crawl itself up nice sized rocks and boulders. Um, it's really been quite impressive, honestly. Yeah, it's it's pretty neat. I've got the X mode in the the less intense of the two settings. So there's like a basic sand and mud setting and then there's deep snow and mud or something. And the, the deep one um, forces the CVT into its lowest ratio at all times. And uh, apparently that helps out a bit, I guess. But I don't think we really need it for this trail. Um, my biggest concern is some of these rocks. It is a very rocky trail. It took us a long time two years ago because we were worried about ripping everything apart. So as long as I can get the car on a line that I like, it's not so bad. The X mode, if you get, for the most part, if you get hung up where you're stopped somewhere, it will a portion traction where it wants to it just breaks the the spinning wheel on either axle um, i do wish it had locking diffs or a limited slip rear or something because it yeah there's been a couple times where we needed momentum yeah you can definitely feel that the software is all there but it's the hardware like the open diffs and stuff that that gives it that half a second of hesitation and then once it figures everything else out it'll make its way up the hill or the, the trail or the rocks or wherever we are. I am having to have you get out and spot a lot because this has a front camera, but uh, the resolution's not that great and the hood is pretty long and I can't really see where I'm going some of the time. So, you know, it'll it'll do it to Tyler's point, but it's much more helpful to have a spotter. Right, and it's it's good and bad, I guess, in certain situations. Like when we're, we're on a decline right now and the indents in the hood, much like the BRZ that you were just in, yeah. gives you the opportunity to place the car very accurately um, when you do have the visibility, but going going up the incline is just the general size of the hood is most definitely it. Yeah, you, you kind of, you know, you can see it for a point and then it drops off and you can't quite see what you're coming up on some of the time. The other interesting thing going down these hills, oh boy, here's some ground clearance challenges. Um, this will automatically engage the downhill ascent, the downhill assist control, whatever the hill descent hill control. control. That's, those are the words go. I want. <laughs> so when it detects, there's a screen you can pull up on the, the Starlink and it will show you your pitch and your yaw. And when you, when you get it going down enough of an angle, it will engage the hill descent on its own. And it kind of just goes along with whatever speed you want with the throttle input. But I mean, I don't know how it feels to you, but the, like, it's not abrupt. It's just really easy. And you see the light blinking and it's doing its thing. Yeah. I, when I looked over and saw that your foot was just hovering over the pedals and would not have known like, yeah, very smooth. It, it does its own thing and it does a very good job at it. Honestly. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost entirely one pedal driving this, which is pretty cool. It, really the ground clearance, I think is like one of the biggest assets plus these tires. Um, 
but we're we're on the way out. So I don't know. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. I'm impressed. I I mean I've done a lot of off-road stuff like this and things like forerunners and jeeps and i am more comfortable here we're <laughs> you know this was a luxurious experience in yeah. comparison i would say yeah and we're we're getting some uphill spots here as we climb out towards the trail exit and you know again the x mode software for for all the the mechanical bits that this doesn't have the x mode really i think is programmed well yeah you can there's just this, like I mean, that. happening right here. There yeah, you go. That just split like, second where it didn't have grip in the front and then it immediately knew it needed to send it, just, it to the rear. It scrabbles and finds something and off you go. So I think, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a person who is doing trails, you know, for canoeing or fishing or whatever often, like, I think we're doing something harder than most people would in this car. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you have to you'll be going to some extreme kayaking rivers <laughs> <laughs> right and <laughs> to do anything like this yeah and i think the uh you know the, the whole point of this too is when we're done we're gonna put the windows up turn on the air conditioning and cruise home on the highway in pretty decent comfort yeah. and i mean well how'd you think it was on the road coming down here i thought it was great i mean i i made the comment that the shock technology and the damping is not only good out here but you drive it on the street and it's comfortable on the street it doesn't feel wallowy and it's hard to do both well and to, to do both in comfort and mm -hmm. i think this does it very well yeah so i guess that's it um so as always make sure you're subscribed everywhere because we're doing more and more fun stuff like this and uh thank you so much for watching go uh, follow us on facebook and instagram and uh stay safe be well see you again next time